In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Proxmox backup server. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jens and I've been working professionally in IT and with Linux systems for the past 10 years. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the installation and setup of the server, creating and scheduling your backups and also encrypting your backups. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to install Proxmox backup server. I'm going to install it on a virtual machine that is completely separate from my Proxmox virtual environment. And I would suggest you do the same. Or you can even install it on a different bare metal server. This will be even better. I prepare here just a regular VM and we're just going to launch the VM. I am booting from the official Proxmox backup server ISO file. You can download the ISO from the Proxmox website and we're going to go for install Proxmox backup server, the graphical interface. So this is just going to boot. Okay, so we're greeted with the user license agreement we're just gonna agree to that i have set up this vm with four different hard drives the boot drive and additional three drives that we're going to use to set up our backup storage here i'm just going to choose my boot drive which is just a 100 gig boot drive for your setup you don't necessarily need to have three or more drives i would just recommend you have a boot drive and another type of storage that where you're going to actually store your backup we're going to click on next we're just going to accept the defaults okay so i'm based in canada so i'm going to choose my time zone here which is America, Toronto, and English as a language keyboard layout. That's fine. Click next, going to create a password. Email can be anything, but here I'm just going to put another e email. This email will be used for notifications and also for let's encrypt certificates if you ever want to create certificates for your server. Okay, we're gonna hit next. Now it's time to set up the hostname and the network. Of course, we're gonna set up a static IP. This is best practice, so I would suggest you do the same. Uh, for the hostname, we're gonna just leave it very simple. pbs.distrodomain.com, that should be fine. My network is going to be dot zero dot zero dot two three four two three four. You make sure you put an IP on the range of your home network, and then my subnet is zero dot one. Sorry, the gateway DNS server. I'm just going to put 9.9.9.9, which is the cloud for DNS servers. And once that's done, we click on next. We review our changes. Everything looks good. And then we click install. And as easy as that, Proxmox is going to do all the heavy lifting and install Proxmox backup server for us. OK, so installation is successful. Now we're able to log in. So the IP was 192.168.0.234 and the port is 8007. We're going to you're going to receive a warning because we don't have a certificate. So we can just click proceed. That's fine. And now we're going to put our username and the password that we previously created on the installation file. So uh, you're going to be greeted with a subscription, valid subscription. That is normal because we don't have a paid subscription, but we're going to use the community edition. So you can safely ignore this warning. So we're going to click on close. And just like that, we have Proxmox backup server up and running. OK, so we're here in the Proxmox backup server UI. The first thing that we want to make sure is that we are running the latest version with the latest updates. So we're going to configure the repositories first. To do that, we're going to go here to administration. So just click on administration and then we're going to click on repositories. First, we're going to disable the enterprise repository. To be able to use this repository, you need to have an active subscription. So we don't have one. So we're going to disable it. And then we're going to click on add. You're going to get another warning for the subscription. That's fine. Just click OK. And we're going to click on no subscription. We're going to click on add. Once that's done, you can see that now the Debian PBS no subscription repo is in. Installed. Now we're going to update our server. So to do that, we're going to click here on updates and we're going to click on refresh. Uh, again, same warning. You can click OK. It's going to look for all the repositories, uh, all the Debian repositories and the no subscription uh, backup server repositories. OK, so once that's done, we can click on exit. And as you can see, we have a lot of things to update. So now we're going to click on upgrade, we're going to launch our terminal and it's going to prompt us for confirmation. Do we want to install all these packages? We're going to say yes. And just like that, we have the latest version of Debian and and Proxmox backup server. So now we're going to reboot the server. You only need to type reboot. It's gonna take a second to come back. Okay, so the server is back. And as you can see, we are now running version 3.2-7. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to prepare our storage and our data store. So we're gonna click on storage and disks first. And then for this tutorial, I'm gonna create a ZFS configuration for our storage. So I'm going to click on ZFS and I'm going to click on create ZFS. Now, as you can see here, there's a note that says ZFS is not compatible with with disk backed by hardware rate controller. This is normal. If we're setting up ZFS, we want the system to have direct access to the individual disks. As we can see, each disk is displayed here. So I'm going to choose all of the disks and I'm going to click on RAID Z. And for the name, I'm just going to call it ZFS 
data store. Uh, make sure that add as the data store is checked here. It will save us some time. And then we just click on create. It's going to take a few seconds for that to initialize. And as you can see, now we have our ZFS pool here of a size of 639 gigs available. If we click on data store, we now are in the data store dashboard. And here we can see all our jobs and the space used by our backups. You can also click on the individual data store that we created. Now you can see that it appeared here. Here we can check all the statistics. So the storage usage, the transfer rate and the in and out operations. If you click on content, here is where we're going to see our backups. And the next thing that we want to configure is our prune and CG jobs. So this is just a configuration that will actually do some cleanup on your backups. You don't necessarily want to completely fill up all your drives. We can just say that we want to keep the last seven backups for any individual item. I think this is fairly normal and I think the schedule it can be done every day at midnight should be fine. We click on add and then this configuration is going to make sure that we only keep the last seven backups for all our VMs and it's going to run on a daily basis. Okay, so now that we have our data store and our prune configuration, now we can start backing up our VMs. So I'm going to connect to my Proxmox virtual environment and we're going to manually back up one of my VMs. So I already logged in here and so I just have a very simple one node and I have three different VMs that we can test. The first thing that we need to do here is we need to add our Proxmox backup server to our Proxmox virtual environment. So we're going to click here on data center and then we're going to go down and we're going to click on storage. Okay, so here we're going to click on add. And as you can see here, we have an option for Proxmox backup server. So we're going to click on this and it's going to ask us information about our Proxmox backup server. So first we're going to give it an ID. This can be whatever you want. I'm just going to name it TBS for Proxmox backup server. Now it requires the IP or the host name of the backup server. In this case is 182.168.0.234. Now here is the username and password for our PBS, our Proxmox backup server. So in this case is root at PAM and the password to log into the backup server. And now we need to select a data store. So if you remember here, our data store is called ZFS data store. So we're just going to put that in here. And now we need to grab the fingerprint of our server. So we come back to our Proxmox backup server. We click on dashboard and then we click on show fingerprint. And now we can copy the fingerprint and we go here and then we click on paste. We click on add. And as easy as that, we have our Proxmox backup storage in our Proxmox environment. So now it's time to back up our VMs. So here I'm just going to start this. It's a very simple uh, Debian 12 VM. Let's just check out the console, make sure it's up and running. Okay. So the VM is up. Now we're going to click on the VM and then we're going to click on backup and we can, we're going to click on backup now. So here is where we can choose where we want to backup this VM. And if you click on storage, as you can see, now we have our PBS backup server here as an option. So you click there and the mode that we want to choose here depends on what you want to do. So I recommend using only snapshot or stop. And the only difference between snapshot and stop is that stop is going to stop the VM and it's not going to be reachable for a few minutes until the backup is done. So this requires downtime and Snapshot is just going to back up the VM without any downtime. Now, the advantage of doing stop is that you're going to have higher data consistency because all of the services are stopped. So the data is not being written or read from the from the VM. So you're going to have a very consistent backup. But the disadvantage is that you need to stop the VM for a few minutes. Now, the snapshot, the advantage is that it's quick and it's going to freeze the memory and it's going to grab the data that is there and it's going to back it up. The con of doing snapshot is that you might encounter some data inconsistency depending on when your snapshot is running. So for this tutorial, we're just going to do a stop first. Here you can choose if you want to send an email to notify someone that the backup is done. But other than that, we can click on backup. It's going to connect to our PBS server. It's, it's going to stop the VM and it's going to create a backup. So we're just going to let that run. Okay, and as easy as that, now your VM is backed up on the server. Now, if we just refresh this page, you don't see any backups here because you're just looking at this local storage. But if we actually select our PBS server storage, now you can see that there's a backup created there. Now, if you want to confirm on your backup server, you can also go back here to the backup server. You can click on your data store. And then as you can see, now we have our VM backup here. This root namespace, the only thing that you need to, to, un, to know is that on the left side, the VM is just the type of backup that it's here. And then on the right is just the ID of the element that you're backing up. So in this case, it's just a full VM backup of VM 102 and VM 102 corresponds to our Debian VM here. This is how you do a manual backup. But what if you want to schedule this on a daily basis or a weekly basis? So to do that, we're going 
going to go back to our Proxmox virtual environment. We're going to click on data center and now we're going to click on backup. Here we can add backup jobs for all your VMs. So we can just create one backup uh, job and then we can choose which node on our cluster. In this case, we only have one or you can just leave it at all. And where do we want to do this backup? So, so we're going to choose our Proxmox backup server and then the schedule is going to be every day at 9 p.m. Now you can do you can do a backup job for individual VMs or you can also just choose all your VMs. If you choose all the VMs, it's going to take all your VMs on that specific node and it's going to back them up to your PVS. Now here you can choose the type of backup that you want to do. So we can do also a snapshot. And on this section here at the top, if you want to send an email notification when the backups are done, this is where would you put your email. So we can create this job. And once that's done, now your Proxmox virtual environment is ready to back up all your VMs to your backup server every day at 9 p.m. Of course, all of this is configurable. You can change it however you want. Let's say now that you lost your VM or your VM is unrecoverable. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to restore our VM. So let's say that our Debian VM crashed and we're not able to recover it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to completely remove the VM, destroy everything about this VM. Now we're going to restore our VM. So to do that, we're going to click on our PBS storage. We're going to click on backups. And as you can see, we have our backup here of our Debian VM. So now we're going to click on the backup and then we're going to click on restore. We can pretty much leave this by default. It's going to grab the information of the original VM. And now we're just going to click on restore. Okay, so it's just grabbing everything from the backup server. It's just going to make sure that all the data is there. We just need to sit tight and wait for the restore to finish. Okay, so all the tasks are done. Now we can close this. And as you can see, our VM is here fully restored. Let's start our VM to make sure that all the data and everything gets intact. So we're going to click on start now. Now it's booting up. And as you can see there, everything is fine. The VM was able to boot back up without any issues. Another cool thing about the Proxmox backup server is that we also have a file level restore. That means that we can click on one of our backups here and then click file restore. And it's going to go and, and expand the image. And as you can see, this is the root directory of our VM. Here we can just go and grab whatever file that we want. So we can go and grab, for example, if we go here inside the root directory and then we want to download this test file that I have here you can click on download and without having to restore the entire VM or just mount anything externally you can extract files and restore files from the VM backup directories how cool is that that's just for file level recovery this works with any type of VM or container that you want to back up if you have containers running on Proxmox you just need to follow the exact same procedure for the containers and the same rules applies for containers okay so now that we can back up and restore our VM. Now I'm going to show you how to encrypt your backups. If we go here and we click on data center and then we click on storage, we're going to click on our Proxmox backup server storage and then we're going to click on edit. And as you can see here, we have an encryption tab so we can click on encryption. Now we're going to click on auto generate a client encryption key. So we're going to click on OK. OK, so here is going to generate our key. It's a good moment now to print your key or to download the key. Just make sure that you keep this key safe because without this key, you will not be able to recover your backups. So we're going to download the key. So now we have the key. We can copy the key and then just paste it somewhere safe. I'm just going to paste it on my notes here. And you could also print the key if, if you wish. So you can just click on print and then you can do save as PDF. That will give you also a QR code. So that's pretty cool. Click on save and then you just store it anywhere where you want in your downloads folder. And once that's done, you can click on close and that's all you need. Now your backups are going to be encrypted. If you go back here, you can see that our encryption key is active with the fingerprint. And so that's all you need to do to now have fully encrypted backups. So what if you have a VM that is outside of Proxmox virtual environment and you want to create some backups? Proxmox actually gives us a cool tool called Proxmox Backup Client that can be installed on any external VM and create file level backups directly to your Proxmox backup server. So in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to do this. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out the channel to grow and to get this information out to more people. So here I have a VM that is outside of my Proxmox virtual environment. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the repo. So we're going to go ahead and, in, and edit the Etsy APT sources list file. And we're going to add the Proxmox backup client repo. I am using a Debian bookworm version. So that's why I'm using the bookworm version of the repo. So we're going to save and quit. So the official backup client is only available right now for APT based distributions, but there is 
is an unofficial one for Red Hat. So in an RPM file, you can look it up on Google and I actually test it out and it works pretty well. So now that we have the repo set up, well, now we need to download the repo key. So we execute this command. All the commands are going to be down in the description. And now we're ready to install the backup client. So we're just going to do an APT update real quick just to make sure the repo works. And now we're going to install APT install Proxmox backup client. Now we're going to create a file level backup of this VM into our Proxmox backup server. So we're going to use this following command. Type of job that we want to do is backup. And then we're going to create a root.pxr file. And here is where you tell it what files do you want to backup. In this case, I'm just going to grab the root of our file system. And now I'm going to tell it which repository do I want to save this backup? Here, you need to put the IP of your Proxmox backup server and the data store that you created. So if we go back to confirm, so this is the IP of my backup server 234. And then the data store that we're using is setfs underscore data store. So those are the parameters that I am putting here. So once that's done, you're just going to hit enter and it's, go it's going to go ahead and actually create a backup of all your files. In this instance, I already put the password, but for you, it's probably going to ask you for the root password of your Proxmox backup server. So so once that's done, you should be able to create a backup just like this. Now, if we go back to our server and then we click reload, now you can see that we have a host Debian backup created here. Now, this backup is different from the other ones because it's not a VM backup, but it's a, a file level backup. Here you can see that we have the backup. And as you can see, we have all our files. Now, one of the cool things about this is that because it's a file level backup, we can actually browse the file system of our backups. This window that you see here is actually the root directory of our external VM. And from here, we can download files, restore files, and do whatever we, we, we want with this. So this is a really cool backup system that you can use on external VMs too that are not part of a Proxmox virtual environment. And you can create file level backup like this. If you enjoy this video, you're going to love this video here where I break down in details how to create a Proxmox cluster. So check it out here.